Okay. Vino Madonai no Heno Aleno Masia de Nicor Nadeno Masia de Nicor Neo. We're going to continue in the class in Share Ora. We're on page Kof Nun Tet, and we're on the second paragraph above the line. It says over here Uch Shemasarnu Biadecha Elo Maftechot Hamida Hanikret Adonai. And when we have put into your hands these keys, remember we discussed from the first class that the names of God are like the keys to the door. So imagine if you have a door with a palace with 10 different doors to lead to the inner chamber where the king is located. Each door has a lock and there's a guard at the door. And the guard will not let a person in if they don't have the key. Once a person has the key, they can open the door and they can proceed into the next level and the next level and the next level. Each one of the names of God represent a key to get into the door. And that's why he calls them in Hebrew, Maftechot, which are keys, which are the Midot, which are the attributes that are, and the attributes specifically that he's been discussing so far in this chapter, for 48 classes so far, is the attribute of Adonai. We have to explain to you, we have to hint to you, we have to divulge to you, that just like there are three names that are connected to the Yichud Ha'amiti, which is the ultimate unification, Besod Adonai, El Adonai, Yudke Vavke, and Ehye, which are three names, Adonai, which is the name that corresponds to the Sfirah of the Malchut, the Yudke Vavke, which corresponds to the Sfirah of the Tiferet, and the Ehye, Aleph He Yud He, which corresponds to the Sfirah of the Keter. All three of those are in the middle, and those three Sfirot in the middle are correspond to the Yichud Amiti, the ultimate, the, the truthful unification. Kach Mishlosha Ksharim E Halalu Nimshechu Badam Nefesh Shama. Similarly, through these different type, these three connectors, there are three different aspects to the human spiritual soul. There's nefesh, which is the lowest aspect, the life force, ruach, which is the ability to speak, and neshama, which is the soul, the ability to understand the sublime, the understand the Torah. Each one of those corresponds to a different one of the names. Vitzarich Adam Lichshor Nefesh Baruach, and a person, what does he have to do? He has to connect the Nefesh to the Ruach, which is the life force, to the speaking force, the Ruach Ba Neshama, and the speaking ability to the Neshama, which is the soul, the Neshama Ba Donai. And the Neshama has to be also connected to Aleph Dal and Nun Yud, the Asod. Then the secret, nefesh adoni tzirura bitzura chayim. This is a pasuk from Shmuel chapter 25, verse number 29, where it says, Ve'aita nefesh adoni tzirura bitzura chayim et adonai elohecha. And let the soul of my master uh, be bundled up in the bundle of life to God, to Yudke Vavke, your, 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 your God. And we're going to see from here what this means. In fact, what we say when a person passes away, if you look on a, gra- a, gra- a gra- gravestones, what's often written, Let the person's soul be bundled up in the bundle of life. That's precisely what we say when a person passes and his soul leaves this world and goes to the world of souls. And we'll see what this means when we look at the bottom. Ulufish is Hashem and Ikra Adonai, and because this is the name in the Pasuk that David Amelech over there is being told by Avigail, Avigail is the one who's speaking to David, and Avigail, of course, is a prophetess. Avigail, and we know prophetess, prophets and prophetesses were experts on the names of God because communication requires those names, and prophets are the best at communication because not only do they receive to they talk to God like all of us do in prayer. Prophets receive communication back that they can understand and then transmit to other people when they're permitted. And that's what a prophet truly is. Because this is the name that is called Aleph Dal and Nun Yud. Which is the last one of the attributes from above to below. The Arishona Milamata Lamala. And the first one one encounters when one is going from below and up. Who sod he achrona shel yudke vavke it barach? This is the secret of the last he of Hashem's holy name. Of course, Hashem's holy name is yudke vavke, and there are, there's a yud, there's a he, there's a vav, and there's a he. The last he of Hashem's name, yudke vavke, corresponds 
to the Midah of Adonai, which is the Malchut. Vihu Adonai mit Ached im Tesha Malot Shalav. And this is the name Adonai, Aleph Dalinun Yud, that is unified with the nine uh, levels that are above it. And therefore, every person has to make an effort with his, all of his force and all of his strength to grab hold of and to attach oneself to the name Yud Kevavke, may it be blessed. The Dibukhu al Yede Adonai and the attachment or the connection to the name Yud Kevavke is through the name Aleph Dalid Nun Yud. Kumoshi Amar, as it says in the Torah in Devarim, Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse number 20, Ubotidbak, to him you shall attach, you shall cleave. Ve'ashem leman rachama v'chasadav yorenu haderech li dabekbo. And God, in the, in the, for the purposes of his mercy and his loving kindness, will show us the way to attach to him. And he will give us help and assistance to follow his will and to do his will in this world. So that we can have, so that we can have merit in the world to come. Amen. Now we're going to go back a little bit and we're going to discuss what the rabbi is writing below the line. We're below the line on page Kof Nun Tet. Resh Nun Vav on the bottom, the second paragraph, Bekesher Hayichud Ha'amiti. K'mo she be'adam she'nivra b'tzelem Elohim me'ira bol nitzotze or ha'neshama. Similarly, that just like when the person is created in the image of Elohim, as the Torah says, Ve'adivra ha'adam b'tzelem Elohim, that man was created in the image of Elohim, Me'irabo, this image is shining in him, is shining through him, perhaps. Nitzose or haneshama, the sparks of the light of the soul, of the neshama, which is that higher level of the soul. Lashlim bechinat haruach lefi tikud masav, to complete or to perfect the aspect of the ruach, which we said is the speech and the emotions. Lefi tikud masav, according to the proper ways a person is supposed to behave and deeds. This is how it is in the upper spheres as well. The neshama that comes from the sphere of ima, or the partsuf of ima, which corresponds to the bina, the other hey of Hashem's name, which is the other part that is feminine. And that name is called em habanim, the mother of the children. Sod nishmat chayim ila'a, that is the secret of of what it says in the Zohar, Nishmat Chaim Ila'a, the living soul above. Nichneset umit pashetet v'pnimiyut adam ha'elyon, it goes inside and distributes herself internally in the Adam Elyon, in the upper world, Shehu Parsuf Ze'eran Pin, and that is the Parsuf that is Ze'eran Pin, which is really translated as the small face, or the short face, which corresponds to the six Sfirot of Chesed, Givran, Netzach, Hod, Yesod, those are what made the Ze'eran Pin, the Vav, Lehanhiget HaOlamot Beshefa Shel Kedusha Torah. To guide the worlds through influence or through abundance or through influ- uh, through through shining of holiness and through Torah. And like the Nefesh Shachayim, Rav Chaim Volozhin explained at length in the first gate, chapter number sixteen, the Zela Shano, and this is what he said: Shegam b'Shosham Ha'Elyon, also in their upper roots, Shel Ha'Olamot of the worlds. Habechina hatachtona shel em habanim, the lower bechina of the uh, of of the worlds, which is em habanim, the mother of the children, which is the bina. Sod nishmat chayim ila. This is the secret of what it is the nishmat chayim, the living soul above. He nichneset mit pashetet bepnimiut adam elyon. She enters and spreads out internally in the Adam Elyon, which of course we discussed is the Tiferet or the Zeranpin, the Tiferet being the one Sfirah that really encompasses all the six. Besod Tosefet Achar Hatikun, in the secret of uh, Tosefet, an additional after the correction, Ayideh Maaseh Tachtonim Haritsuyim, by way of the proper behavior of those who are living in this world. Continuing on, Resh Nun Zayin, Nefesh Ruach Neshama. 
Nishmat Adam mitchaleket lechamisha chalakim. So now the rabbi is going to explain a little more detail that the soul of a person is really not three, but really has five parts associated with it. Keneged chamisha part sufim, vis-a-vis the five different parts sufim, which are the faces, which we'll discuss. Ukeneged chamisha olamot, and vis-a-vis the five different worlds. Ukeneged chamesh shemot, and vis-a-vis the five different names. The Atam, and the reason, Shadam Nivra B'Tselem Elohim, the reason why man was created in the image of Elohim, Ukefiya Chalukah Shel HaOlamot V'Hashemot Kach Elke Nishmato. And that's basically as just like we see the divisions of the worlds above, the spiritual worlds, and the different names that we have. This is similar to the different aspects, the different aspects of the human soul. Kamosh Katav Aramchal, like Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lutzata wrote, Biklalim, in his book, of Klalim, which are general principles, Ma'amara Chokhmah, the, uh, the, the article of wisdom, Zayin Tetvav, Haneshama Shel Ha'adam Mitchaleket Lechamesh Bechinot. The soul of a person is basically divided into five aspects. Hanikret, and these aspects are Ruach, ne, I'm sorry, Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama, Chaya, Yechida. So again, all these words uh, have really no good, really, English translation. Nefesh being the lowest part, ruach being the ability of speech, neshama being the part that can uh, learn Torah, the part that can connect to God, chaya, which is really outside, surrounds the body, but is outside, it's like a cup that is filled to the top and then spill it over, but what's spilling over is still attached inside the cup, which of course is not possible in the physical world, but is possible in the spiritual world. That's the chaya. And the yechida is what unifies everything together uh, in the in the ultimate, which was something we'll talk about Bezrat Hashem later on. And these five different aspects of the soul basically come from the five different parts of the the five different groupings of the Svirot. Nefesh min nukva, the nefesh comes from the nukva, which is the feminine, the lowest aspect of the five uh, of the partsufim, which is Adonai, which corresponds to the name Aleph Dalad Nunyun and the sphere of the Malchut. And then we have Ruach Miz Eranpin. The Ruach is basically from the Zeranpin, which we said is the short face. That's the name Yudke Vavke, which is the Tif Eret, which is really the summary of the six Sfirot that make up the Zeranpin. Neshama Mi'ima, the Neshama, which is that next upper la- aspect of the soul, is from Ima, which is the upper feminine part, okay? And Eheye Bina, and, and basically the name Eheye Bina, Chaya Me'aba, and the Chaya comes from Aba, which is the, the, the that, that one that's spilling over is from Aba, which is what's above the Bina, and that's the Chokhmah, the Surah of the Chokhmah, and Yechida Me'erichanpin, and the Yechida, which is that highest level of the soul, comes from Arichanpin, which is the long face, or the patience, which is the Keter, which is the highest one of the Svirot. Ha-Nefesh hi keneged olam ha the Nefesh is vis-a-vis the world of Asiya, the world of action, which is the actual world that we are living in. Ha-Ruach keneged olam ha the Ruach is based vis-a-vis the world of the formation. Haneshama keneged olam habriya, the neshama is keneged is vis a vis the world of the briya, the world of the creation. Chaya keneged olam ha'atzilut, the chaya is keneged is vis a vis the world of the atzilut. Ubechinat yechida keneged olam adam kadmon. And basically, the aspect of the yechida is vis a vis the world of adam kadmon, which is the highest world. Vezel lashon midrash, and this is the language of the midrash, Bereshit Rabbah, in chapter 14. Hey Shemot Yikriula. There are five different names for the human soul. Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama, Chaya, Yechida. Hanefesh Zehadam. This Nefesh is the blood, as the Torah says, Nefesh Habasab Adam Hu, that the Nefesh of the person is the blood, because that is the life force that brings nutrients and oxygen to all the tissues of the body. Shene Emar, Ki Hadam Hu Nefesh. The blood is the Nefesh. Yes? Ruach Shehi Ola Viyoredet. The Ruach is what goes up and comes down, because that's what wind does. It moves, it has movement. Shene'emar, mi yodea ruach b'nei adam ha'ole hi l'mala. Who knows the spirit of a person that goes up uh, above? Neshama zo ha'ofiyah de'briyata. 
and the neshama, which is that higher, the higher level above the ruach, is the ofia libriata, which is the aspect of the bria, which is the aspect of the creation. And similar, like we see that the world of nature, which is the physical world, is vis-a-vis the name Yud Kevavke, but Adnut Aleph Dalad Nun Yud, Vishem Ehye, the name Aleph He Yud He, Hu Hanagat Nisteret, that is a hidden type of government. That is basically clothed in the other worlds. Or to add or to give them, to infuse them with holiness and with abundance. And when do we see that revealed? When there are open miracles that are happening in the world, visible miracles of changing of the nature, when there is Torah and there is Yirah. And that's why if you look in uh, Moshe Rabbeinu, when he's by the snare, like the class I discussed on Tuesday, when he's by the snare, he asks in what name, the people are going to ask, what name should I tell them? And what is God's answer? The name Ehye, which means the Keter, which is this upper aspect, which means open miracles. And what is Ehye, Asher Ehye, that we discussed based on the Orachayim, what the Orachayim says, that to Moshe Rabbeinu he was told that not only are there going to be open miracles now, but there are going to be open miracles in the future. But when you tell the Jewish people, don't tell them about the open miracles in the future, because that means there's going to be another exile in the middle and they can't really hear that. But the open miracles in the future, which was the second name Ehyeh that Moshe Rabbein was told, is what we are waiting for in the time of the Mashiach. Continuing on. This is basically how the different aspects of the nefesh, ruach, and neshama, those three levels of the soul, shel ha'adam, of the person, like the gra explained in his perush on Sefer Yitzira, in the first parak, in the first mishnah, ha'adam neshama ne'elemet me'od, the person has a soul that is hidden, significantly hidden, v'ikar chiyutohu ha'ruach, and the essential part of the person's life is the Ruach, which is that second level. And this is the person that is receiving reward and punishment. That's what this world is about, reward and punishment. Now, of course, that should not be the goal. And this is what a person feels. This is the feelings, this is the emotions. And this is all of his powers and all of his emotions and all of his senses. And the Neshama corresponds to the Seichel, the intelligence, that teaches the person knowledge or teaches the person how to connect to God. And that is the Mazal, that is the lot of the person. And this is in the Shamaim. This means in the Mazal comes from the Shamaim. Continuing on, rak nitzotzot mitnotzesim mimenu, but that only sparks come from there, not the full aspect. Al ha'adam lehanhigo laskil to the person, so that he can be going through the world and he can become more intelligent and closer to God. I am Baruch Hu Nefesh Shachayim. Look in more detail in the book Nefesh Shachayim by Rav Chaim Rivalojin, who is a student of the Gra in Shar Aleph in the first gate. Perak Yudalin and Tedvav, Vizesha Marakatuv, and this is what it says the Pasuk in Yov in chapter thirty two, verse number nine. Achen Ruach he ba'an be'enosh unt neshamat shadai tevinem. Therefore, the Ruach, or the Spirit, shall we say, for lack of a better translation, it is with the human being. Un shema unishmat shadai tevinem and the and the, the neshama of Shaddai Tevinem will give them bina, will give them understanding. Ratzalomar, now the rabbi is going to explain what this means. Shebechinat haruach hi mishtarshel mushpa v'nichnas betoch adam. That the aspect of the ruach basically is mishtarshel, which is developed, and is mushpa, and is influencing, and goes inside the person himself. Aval haneshama shi nishmat shaddai, but the soul that is really the neshama of shaddai, Ratzal Omar Nishmat Pi Vit Barach, which really means the Neshama of his mouth, which is the mouth Kav Yachol of God. En Atzmuta Mushpa Umitgale Betoch Adam. It does not, the 
essence of it does not really go into the person, but is outside. Kihi miromim, because she is too high. Tishkon, she lives in the upper aspects, above man. Betoch piv yitbarach kavyachol, almost like to say in the mouth of God kavyachol. Rak shehi notenet lo bina, but that she gives him bina, she gives him understanding. Venitzotze ora alav, and sparks of light on him. Lahaskilob imke matzpunea Torah kedusha to teach him and to educate him in the depths of what is hidden in the holy Torah. Okay. Reish nun chet. Tzira b'tzora chayim. That's that pasuk that we said that Avigail said about David HaMelech. Seder hit kashrut chelke ha-nefesh ruach neshama bi'er b'nefesh chayim. The way the different aspects of the nefesh ruach and neshama are connected with each other were explained in Nefesh HaChaim, once again, that book by Chaim of Elohim, in the first chapter in uh, Parak 17, the first gate, uh, Parak 17, uh, chapter 17, the Zela Shono, and this is what he wrote. Ki yadua beseder hishtalshulut ha'olamot, because it is known in the order of the way the worlds develop. Ki bechina ha'elyona shbechol olam, that the upper aspect, the highest aspect of each world, is connected to the lowest aspect of the world that is above it. That's how all the worlds are connected to each other. Dayen Zohar, look in the Zohar, in Vayikra, uh, the 10th page on the second side, that all the worlds are connected there. This one with this one and this one with that one. It's similar to like a chain where each link in the chain is connected to the one that is above it. As it's explained in the words of the, in the books of the Arizal. Shechitzoniyot malchut shel kol olam upartzuf, that the outer aspect of the malchut, which is the lowest sphira of every world and every partzuf and every face, nase pnimiyut keter leolam ole partzuf shetachtav, basically becomes the inner aspect of the keter of the world, which is the highest sphira of the world that's right below, or the partzuf that is below. Vechen hu ha'inyan hashlosha Habechinot nefesh ruach neshama, and similarly, this is the what we discussed that about the nefesh ruach neshama, those three aspects of the human soul. Shel haadam ki chol bechina medaber bishbiktusha kalu meeser bechinot pratiim. That each bechina, each aspect of something that is has holiness attached to it, is basically included with ten aspects inside, ten particulars. And that's how the world is built, based on tens. Shem ha'eses virochalo, and these are the ten spheres of it. And the upper aspect of the nefesh, so the upper aspect of the nefesh connects to the lowest of the ten aspects of the ruach, similar like we saw in the worlds. And the upper aspect of the ruach is connected with the lowest aspect of the soul above, which is the neshama. And the neshama also is mitkasher, it is connected and attached to the aspect of its root, Sod Knesset Yisrael, which is this, the root of Knesset Yisrael, feminine once again. Knesset Yisrael, the gathering of the Jewish people, which is feminine. Shehi Shoresh HaKnesia Shel Kol Neshamot Klal Yisrael Yachad. And this is the concept of the grouping of all the Jewish souls together. This is what David Melech was told by Abigail, Tiyen Nishmatot Tzurura B'Tzrora Chayim, the bundle of life. V'chen al zeh haderech gam bechina Shoresh HaNeshama, and similarly the root of the soul, gam ken mit kasheret lemala lemala, continues to connect to what's above it. 
ממדרגה למדרגה, from one level to another level, עד עצמות אינסוף ברוך הוא, until a person כביכול can get to the essence of the אינסוף, which is not something that we can even talk about, uh, let alone think about. וזהו שאמרה אביגיל לדוד, and this is what אביגיל said to דוד, והייתה נפש אדוני צורה בצורה חיים את אדוני אלוהיך, that the soul of my master, talking about דוד, should be connected, צורה, in the bundle of life, at Yud Kevavke Elohecha, for Yud Kevavke, your God, Ayen Sham. Continuing, V'chol avodat ha'adam, and all of the, of the work, all of the service of man, he le'yached ul'kasher ul'alot et kol chelkei nefer shuach neshama shelo. The, all the aspects of the service of man is to connect these three aspects of his soul, the nefer, shruach, and neshama, with each other. Kamo should be er b'sha'are teshuva, like it was explained in Sha'are teshuva, in Sha'ar Bet, in the second gate, chapter number 12. Mi yodea ruach b'nei adam ha'ole hi lemala. Who knows the ruach of the person? that goes up, that rises up, the Ruach HaBehema HaYoredet Lamata, and the Ruach of the Behema that goes down. The Ruach of a person, a man, is supposed to go up, and the Ruach of an animal goes down. Vihi Nefesh HaRasha, and this is the Nefesh of the Rasha, because what is a Behema? It's a human being that's behaving like an animal, not behaving properly, and that's a Rasha. Karala nefesh harasha nefesh behema, and it calls the nefesh of the rasha, the soul, the nefesh, the lowest aspect of an evil person, of a bad person, nefesh behema, the nefesh of the animal. Because it chaos goes after the ta'ava, which are the desires, and that's precisely how animals live their lives. Hagashmit kebehema, the material desires, the material instincts, like an animal. But the soul, the nefesh of the tzaddikim, is called ruach b'nei adam, the spirit of a human being. The nefesh harasha, and the, the nefesh of the evil person, asher kol ta'avato lechetze haguf bechayav, that all of his desires, all of her desires, are for the filling of the desires of his physical body. V'nifredet ta'avata me'avodat taboreh v'nivdelet mishoshea. And when a person is doing things for their own personal uh, benefit and pleasure, it is disconnected from the Shamayim. It is disconnected from God, which means it's not for God, it's for you. And that, of course, is not proper behavior. Tered bemoto lemata, then that person, when they die, will go down. El makom ta'avata, to the place of their desires, which is the dirt, which is the ground. Aval ya'lua lemarom ledin ulemishpat, but what will happen is it will be risen up, despite the fact that it belongs to be in the dirt, it's going to be risen up to pay, to basically to be judged, and to have judgment in the shamayim. Kasher ya'alu et ha'even ayede kafakala. Oh boy, the rabbi is talking here about this concept of the catapult, which is discussed amongst the Sfarim. Uh, it's a worse punishment than Gehenam. Gehenam, of course, is a, uh, is a continuous type of discomfort, spiritual discomfort to the soul. That has a limited time, not more than 12 months. The, only an evil person goes to Gehenam for 12 months. But this is something else. This is called Kafa Kala. This is a soul that doesn't even have the zuchut, doesn't have the merit to go to hell because they has done certain things in their life that are pretty bad, that they don't have that merit. And they're basically kavyachol, like a stone that is catapulted from one port to the other. It's a, they're called uh, artalain, which means souls that afloat in the world that have no physical body attached to them. And they can spend hundreds of years here. Uh, and they are basically tortured by this type of kafakala, which unlike Gehenam, which is a continuous type of discomfort, this is a discomfort that basically comes and goes. And we know, if we understand torture, 
what is the difference between pain and torture? In torture, what happens is the intense pain is given and then it's withdrawn. And just if the person is resting, they get the pain again. That's called torture. That's what kafa kala is similar to. And after this soul of the wicked one goes up to the Shamaim to pay judgment, and then when it's judged harshly because of its deeds, it was only concerned about itself and its physical pleasures, she goes according to her nature, she comes back to this world. Just like when it's throw up a stone up in the air, no matter how hard you throw it, sooner or later, what's going to happen? It comes back down. That's the same idea that the soul gets thrown up in the air goes to the deen and then has to fall back to the ground and that is very uncomfortable and this is what the pasuk Avigal was saying to David HaMelech that let the soul of my master be bundled up in the bundle of life et nefesh oivecha yikala'ena betoch kafa kala the end of that pasuk, which the rabbi up in the beginning didn't quote, but the end of that pasuk is, Vet nefesh oivecha, and the souls of your enemy, will be, will be thrown about in the tof kafa kala, in the catapult, uh, in the, 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 the spoon of the catapult, shall we say. That's the end of that pasuk. Ukavanato, what is the kavana of this? Sheim adam nimshach binafsho, shisham retsunotav, shisham retsunotav, that if a person allows his soul to go after his spirit for holiness and for purity, and his soul draws strength and power and abundance from rising up in Torah, shamaim and awe of shamaim, awe of heaven, to the, he connects himself through this service and his Torah because everything he's doing or she's doing is for the sake of God and not for the sake of their pleasures, but they're doing things even that are pleasurable for the body, but they're doing it for the sake of God because they're commanded or because they have to eat in order to sustain themselves so they can learn and pray. This is how a person can do everything they do in life, even the most mundane things, but do it for holy needs. This would connect the physical things that one is doing to the Shamaim. That's why we make a bracha before we eat. That's why we have brachat hamazon after we eat. All the things that we do are basically connecting the physical, spiritual things we do up. And that's precisely the avodah. That's the service that is incumbent upon every person. Then what happens is because he's taken all these physical things and he's bundled them up, he's connected them to the Shamaim, his soul is worthy after he dies to be connected in the bundle of life. But then the opposite. But if the person is influenced and is drawn to his personal desires and all the things that he desires, his physical desires, the material things, the animalistic things, his soul becomes like the ruach of the behema, like the soul of the animal. That goes down to the dirt, goes down to the land. And she is separated, she is removed from the Kedusha, from the holiness. And she falls down like the stone in the catapult, because what happens? The catapult throws the stone up, it goes up, 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 and then it falls to the ground. Okay. Let's do the next one. Resh Nun Tet. This is the secret of the last hay of Hashem's name. A person connects the aspects of his soul. When a person connects the aspects of his soul to the roots, the upper roots, then he is considered or she is considered to be Adam Shalem, a whole person, a full person, or a perfect, a perfected person. And then what happens is the name of Hashem becomes perfected, becomes shalem, becomes whole. Because then the hey achrona, which is separated from the yud kevav, is connected to the yud kevav, and then God's name is shalem, is complete or is whole based on his deeds, because that's what we do in this world, in the world of Asiyah, which corresponds to the last day of Hashem's name, we are connecting everything to their spiritual roots. That's precisely the work of a Jew. 
And that's what we see over here. Mashlima, this is what it does. L'shem Chuch HaBruchu. That's why before a prayer, uh, often in many Sidurim, there's a special prayer for the unification of God's name. What does that mean? Of course, God is one. We're not. But what we're doing is we're by through attaching our physical uh, things to spiritual things, this is precisely reconnecting the hay of Hashem's name to the Yud Kevav. Kedita b'tikunei Zohar, let's explain the tikunei Zohar, and daf tet vav bet. Machut taman hay uba itkare Yud Kevav ke bishlimu. Machut, which is uh, basically the hay, the last hay of Hashem's name, the Malchut, that's the feminine. When he connects them together, then there's Shlemut, then there is a wholeness, there's a connection. And this is the language of the Zohar in the 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 pers- the, the, the shepherd of faith, which is Moshe Rabbeinu. Parashat Naso Dav Kaf Kof Bet, the Parashat Naso and page 122. Koman de Chazar Bichuva, every person who repents. Kilu Chazar Ote Le Otvav. It's as if the Ote, the separated, because while they were sinning, there was a separation of the hay of Hashem's name with Yud Kevav. But when the person repents, what is he doing? The word is Teshuva. He is returning that hay. He is returning that hay back to its proper place, which is connected to the Vav. Devadai Kad Barnash. That we see clearly that a person, when they are sinning, what they're doing is they're causing a distance, they're causing a pirud, kavyachol, between the hay and the vav of Hashem's name, yud ke vav ke, the last hay with the vav. Ubeginda, and based on that, it charif be because of that the temple was destroyed. It rachaku mitaman, and the Jewish people were separated from their land which is a similar thing. And they are spurred amongst the nations of the world. And therefore we see that everybody that performs teshuva, everybody that has repentance, he causes the hay to be reconnected to the letter vav of Hashem's name. And the salvation or the redemption is connected to that. That's why we understand that the redemption is connected to the Jewish people repenting. The Abi'ur, in the explanation, said their Amidat HaSS Firot, that the, the level of the 10th Sfirot, who can neged Shem Havayaz, vis a vis the name of Yudke Vavke. Chochma is the Yod, Bina is the first He, Tiferet is the Vav, the Amalchut Ahe Achrona, and the Malchut is the last He of Hashem's name. He has Sfirah Tachtona. This is the lowest ones of the Sfirot. Hamekabelat et Or has Sfirot that receives the light from the Sfirot Shemealea that are above her. Umashbiya Otam la Tachtonim, and then she distributes them and influences what's below. Behashrat Hashechina through the divine providence. Vikasher Bnei Yisrael Chotim, but when the Jewish people sin. Nifrad havav minahei, the vav is separated from the last hay of Hashem's name. Venifsak shefa, and because of that separation, it's like a circuit that's broken, and the abundance from Shamaim stops. Shaps mehus mehavav sfirot in the midat machut. So the, the abundance that's supposed to be coming from the sixth sfirot, which is the vav, the zeran pin, who doesn't come because there's a separation between the Vav and the He because of the deeds, the sins of the Jewish people. And then what happens is the Midah of the Malchut becomes dry and desolate because she's not receiving the abundance from the Shamayim because of that separation. And the divine providence, go, the divine presence goes into the exile. Give benefits and abundance to the world, to the nations of the world, and also to the forces of the tumah, the impurity and the klipot, the husks. But when a person repents, when a Jewish person repents, then there is a light, a, a light that shines from the world of the bina, which is above the vav. That's the first hey of Hashem's yud kevav ke name. Shehu olam ha and the Bina is really the world of the Teshuvah. Letaken et kol hakilkulim, 
to basically fix everything that has been broken. And then based on that, the six Sfirot that are below the Bina, those six over there, they return back and they can they now resume their abundance and influence to the Sfirah of the Malchut, which is the Shekhinah. And everything becomes corrected as it was before. And then, just similarly, when a person accepts upon himself the yoke of Malchut Shamaim, very interesting, the word is Malchut Shamaim, Malchut the Sfira, Malchut of the Shamaim. Zochesh Yair Bo Or Havaya. Then, when he accepts Or Machut Shamaim, what O Machut Shamaim, the yoke of heaven, what happens? Then shines in this person the light from Yud Ke Vav Ke U Mashlim Kolche Ke Ha Nefesh Ruach Neshama Shelo. And then all the aspects of his soul, the Nefesh Ruach and Neshama, are perfected. Okay, Resh Samach. The Hu Adonai Mit Ached Im Tesha Maalot. And the name Aleph Dalad Nud Yud is connected or unified with the nine levels that are above her. Tachlit avodat mitzvot, the purpose of all of the service of the mitzvot, of the commandments. Huli yached shem alaf dalad nun yun im shem havaya, is to connect the name alaf dalad nun yun, which corresponds to the Shekhinah, which corresponds to the Malchut, with the name Havaya, which corresponds to the Tiferet. Kmosh Amru Chazal, like our rabbis explained in Pirkei Avot, in chapter 2, Mishnah number 12. Kol ma'asecha yu l'shem shamayim. All of your deeds, whatever you do, should be l'shem shamayim, for the sake of heaven. For the, really in Hebrew, the translation, l'shem shamayim, for the name of heaven. Ubi'er ha-megale amukot, and the megale amukot, which is a perush on parashat, on the, on, the, on the Torah, parashat lech lecha, and his explanation, parashat lech lecha, ki tevat shem because the word Shem in the, in the words of the Mekubalim of the Kabbalists is corresponding to the Midah, the attribute of Malchut, which is the Shekhinah, which is God's feminine presence. Shamaim yechune lahavaya b'chol makom. And we know Shamaim is really Yudke Vavke in every place. Klalo shel davar. This is, means, what is Lashem Shamaim? Shem is the Malchut. Shamaim is Yudke Vavke. Who gamken leached shem im shamayim is really to connect the shem, which is the malchut, with the shamayim, which is the yud kevavke. Vezeh kavana sheomrim l'shem kushav ruchu shchinte, and this is what we say before we do a mitzvah. When we say for the sanctification, for the name, and the sanctification of kushav ruchu, which is the vav ushchinte, which is the malchut. Shehu ot vav shel shem havaya, the kutsha brichu is the vav of the name of yudke vavke, which is the tiferet, ushchinte, and the shchina, her shchina, shehu ot he, that's the he, the last name of letter of Hashem's name, tata shel shem havaya, the last he of Hashem's name, the lower one which corresponds to the malchut. Bidchilu, with fear, with awe, but not fear where you step back, but awe of the greatness of God, which brings a person closer. Which is the Othe Elyona. That's the Dechilu. That's the He Elyona that corresponds to the Bina. Uruchimu be'ahava, and Ruchimu is with ahava, with love. King Eneged Ot Yod. This is connected to the Ot Yod, which is the Chochma. Uleached Shem Yudke Bevavke, and to unify the name Yudke in Vavke. Leached Shem Yudke Shehu Keneged Chochma Mina, which is connect the name Yudke, Yud Hey, which is the Chochma, which is the Yod, and the Bina, which is the Hey. Im Vav Hey, with the Vav Hey, which is Shehem Tiferet and Malchut, which is the Tiferet, the Vav, the Zeranpin, and the Malchut, which is the Shechina. Ayideha Hu Tamir Vene'elam, on that, by waste, by way, of that, this is what is hidden. This is the hidden aspect of mitzvah service. And all this happens through the ha'ara, to the abundance, to the shining of the keter, which is hidden and which is uh, not uh, visible, which is above. And of course, that is the will. The keter corresponds to the ratzon, which is the will of Hashem, which is the Torah, which is the revealed will of Hashem in the world. What does God want us to do? And then the yichud is complete. 
it's perfect. And then what happens is all the ten Svirot are together, they're connected, and the name, the Shem, is Shalem, is perfected, is whole. Okay, let's do one more. Resh Samech Aleph. To, to make effort with all of his strength. A person has to do the mitzvot with shlemut, with perfection. And what does that mean with perfection? With all aspects of the human being, which is the maaseh, which is the action, which is the dibur, which is the speech, and the maaseh, which is the thought. The maaseh, the action of the mitzvah, is correcting, is metaken, is fixing. The lower aspect, bechinat nafsho, the aspect of his nefesh, she keneged shem alaf dalad nun yud, that corresponds to the name alaf dalad nun yud. Dibur, speech, metaken bechinat taruach, basically corrects the aspect of the ruach, keneged tiferet, and that's vis-a-vis the tiferet. The machshava and the thought metakenet bechinat and neshama keneged bina basically corrects the the bechina the neshama which is vis a vis the bina, which is the upper hay. The aikale dadek b'maase shedibur machshava levad lo yoel klum, and the key factor is to be careful and to be cautious in the maase that the dibur and the machshava alone don't do anything. Like the Nefesh Shechaim said in Prakim Perak Hey, the Adua Bezohar, it is known in the Zohar, in the writings of the Arizal, the aspect of the Tefillah, who tikun ha'olamot ve'hit'alot penimiyotam, that the aspect of prayer is the correction or the fixing of the world and to rise up the inner aspects of these worlds. Every aspect of the nefesh, ruach, and neshama that is in them. From below to above, the chulei. And they're connected and they're connected through the movement of the lips, the chituch tevot and the cutting of the words of the prayer. That's why it's so important when a person is praying that the lips have to be moving. Which is the aspect of ma'ase that's in speech, which is the movement of the mouth, the lips actually. And this is similar to what our rabbi said. That the movement of a person's lips is really ma'aseh. The hevel ve'akol shehu dibur and the, the, the hevel, which is the, the breath, and the voice, which is the dibur, atzmo hu b'chinat ruach shebo. This is the ruach, because in order to speak, there has to be movement of air across the vocal cords. That corresponds to the ruach, like we discussed previously. The kavanat halev, and the intention of the heart, that tevot be'et amiratam, and the words, when the person is saying them, hu b'chinat ha'neshama dibur. This is the aspect of the soul that's in the speech. And therefore, a person cannot fulfill the obligation of prayer through just thinking about the words of the prayer. The person actually has to say the words of the prayer, obviously with just the lips moving and not uh, someone else hearing your prayer, because uh, that's not allowed. And the Amidah, it's called the silent prayer, which means no one else should hear your prayer. And according to the simple, the, the, the pshat, a person should, their own ear should be able to hear what's coming out of their mouth, but no one else should hear. And according to the sod, according to the secret, the ear should be able to hear the words coming out of their mouth. The only thing the ear should be able to hear is the movement of your lips. And that's what the actual ma regarding the dibur, and that's the neshama of the words that a person is saying. Because we cannot arrive and to attach the aspect of the neshama, if a person doesn't go according to the proper derech, from below to above. First he has to connect the nefesh of the dibur, which is the movement of the lips, with the speech, with the, the wind of the speech, which is the, the, the breath and the, the, the voice. After that, he connects the movement of the lips with the ma'aseh, which is the hevel and the kol, which is the, the breath and the voice with the dibur, with the intention and the thought that is the heart. But when a person only prays with thought, his prayer does not work. 
and he did not fix, or she did not fix anything. The Erik Bashar Aleph, and he explained in more detail in the first gate, in the thirty, in the twenty-second parak, in the twenty-second uh, chapter. Shafilu im lo yechaven v'lo yada tamei mitzvot. Even if the person doesn't have kavana and doesn't know the reason for the mitzvot, im kolze nitkaimu a mitzvot. The mitzvot is still the, completed. V'itukanu al yedehem, and there is correction that happens by way of them. Ha'olamot, the worlds. V'itraba bahem kedusha ve'or, and there's an increasing light and holiness through that. V'al kach tzarich ledadek meod bechalkei amase. Therefore, a person who is very, very cautious regarding the action in the mitzvot to make sure they're doing them properly. And then afterwards, he should uh, add on and do things with holiness, with uh, purity and uh, proper awe of the, of the heart. And based on that, he's going to cause, or she's going to cause, other types of corrections and tikkunim that are great in the worlds, in the spiritual worlds. Okay, I think we're going to stop here. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, sorry about the delay in the class. Uh, I'm sorry I had to reschedule from Sunday. Um, and uh, from Tuesday, Bezrat Hashem will resume a regular schedule next week, although I may have to change the Parsha class to Tuesday and the Sha'are Ora class to Sunday. I'll post that when, uh, when, uh, when I can. Baruch Adonai Leolam, Amen Amen. Have a good night.